Well, it might be time to teach an old dog new tricks. Uh, this is an LED T8 um, tube light uh, to replace a fluorescent light. And uh, this is designed to be used with one that has a ballast uh, built into the fixture. I do not believe there was anything wrong with this um, LED light. Uh, this is strictly uh, <coughs> improper user installation. So, what did we always do when you're changing a fluorescent light? The power usually was on. You reached up. You kept your hands away from the ends. You twisted it 90 degrees. And then you uh, pulled it down. And you did the reverse to put up the new one. Good. Well, I bought a four-pack of these, or actually two two-packs. I uh, did the first one, fine. Did the second one, fine. Did the third one, fine. And then it arced on the fourth one. So, now I have something I can tear apart. And I'll show you the fixture. Now, as I said, the power was on. Uh, right in the instructions it says, Turn the power off before doing this. Oh well, I guess there was a reason. Now I'm just going to switch over to where the fixture is. Now the fixture, though, is cheap. Uh, real cheap. <laughs> so I think you're going to see where the issue was. So there's the lovely fixture, nicely arced. But if you'll see on the left side of it how the copper projects out, but even at the very bottom, I'll stick an arrow in there, you can see that part of the metal is actually bent over. And in there, most of the metal is actually already pushed back. So, let's take a look at the other end. Yeah, so that's what it should have uh, looked like. Now this one here, also the little the metal at the bottom is bent over. Maybe they did that just to uh, reinforce it for when somebody rammed one of these things in. But either way, it's uh, thoroughly toast. I just won't use this one anymore. Three of these. are quite adequate for my spider plants Christmas cactus and this thing so what I'm gonna do is nibble my way into this thing uh, first off I'm gonna see if I can actually push these pins back and that one went back a bit and I'll just snip away at this Maybe. And I'll fast forward if it becomes monotonous. Oh, this does seem to be going pretty quick. I did take a look inside here using a flashlight and looking through the vent holes. There's not a lot in these things. <laughs> Lots of LEDs, but other than that... Uh, no massive amount of uh, electronics by the looks of it. Now what I will be doing though is uh, saving the tube because uh, a tube like this, four feet long, oh, there we go, and that's probably off the camera. This is not going to come out too well. Let me just adjust the camera. Okay, there really isn't a lot on these things. There's the one pin. There's the other pin. I'll have to figure out what that is. Well, this is one end. I'm going to do the other end. I'm not sure that's a 
acrylic plastic anymore. That sounded a bit crunchy and it could be glass. So I'm going to have to be a bit more careful. So there's the other end, plus one little piece I cut out, and now I'm going to have to try to figure out how to get this thing out of here, and it'll be off camera. Well, I tried isopropanol, and it's not uh, working on whatever glue's there, so next I'm going to try a bit of heat. Well, a bit of heat um, helped loosen it up. Yeah, this tube's glass. I thought it would be plastic. It must just be cheaper to make it out of glass, or that's how they are originally made, and they were just reusing the production line. Uh, so this is going to get very messy, and I'm going to have to set up some way to do this. Obviously, I'm not recovering the tube now. What I'm going to do is essentially run it into this plastic bag. I cut a hole in this side. I'll break the glass up uh, to try to keep it all in there. And then eventually run the strip out the other side. I'm not doing this live on camera because I want to minimize chance of risk of glass. But I'll start with this one here. That seems to be working. It'd be interesting to see if I can get it separated from there. Yeah, that doesn't want to come off. Yeah, let's just do a bit more. Then I'm going to go off camera. Well, the majority of the glass landed up in the bag. I did have to vacuum up. And now I'm just going to try some heat on this and see if I can pry off the last of the glass. Well, it's done. I strongly recommend you don't do this at home. Uh, it took quite a while to clean up the mess. What I eventually did, and I don't want to show it on camera, so somebody might say, Hey, you did it that way. Why did I cut myself up? Well, I used this, uh, isopropanol, and these to clean it up. And then I did a lot of vacuuming afterwards. Uh, there was glass everywhere. So, this is one side of the circuit. There's D3, D4. LEDs, important part on the LEDs is coming up right there. Not sure you're going to be able to see the traces, uh, but there's a cross over here. And then we continue on down to the other end. And I did do up a schematic. Oh, these here, and these people did go into lots of safety, are thermofuses, non-resettable. Uh, they're set at uh, 135 uh, C. They've got a 2 amp uh, limit. So they've put a lot of protection in on this. So that if somebody starts plugging it in when it's uh, <coughs> turned on, uh, maybe uh, the thing will cut out. So, the circuit's actually pretty simple. It's incredibly simple. Uh, on all four pins, they have put the thermal uh, fuses, uh, the A5-F uh, uh, from AUPO, however they pronounce it. It's a 2 amp, 135C. Therefore, if something goes wrong, heats up, 
These are non-resettable. They pop and it disables it. This part here most likely is involved for the ballast and the starter. It's a 2200 ohm resistor, which is two, 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 and a capacitor, which I have no idea what the value is. Uh, it's not this big one here, it's this little one underneath it. You'll see it on the other end a bit better. Then they have this capacitor here. It's a 630 volt, uh, 333, which then leads into the bridge rectifier, which is this up here. I, mean, I simplified the diagram. It's just a standard bridge rectifier. And then your two other things on both ends. Then they put in some smoothing capacitors here. And then what they have is two strings of the LEDs that are in series. So, there's all those ones in series. There's all these ones in series. And that's it. Uh, this end has a bit less stuff. It's got a... Repeat. There's a little... Uh, capacitor there, there's the resistor, and of course the thermal fuses. So it's pretty straightforward, it's just basically that. Uh, it's a shame that I wasn't able to salvage the tube out of it, but I looked at the Home Depot site and they actually have some other tubes uh, for fluorescent fixtures for protecting the bulbs in case so that if it gets whacked real hard um, they break inside the tube and those are clear tubes so I might at some point try to fit this in one of those uh, because it should be fully uh, operational but uh, when you're only paying I think it was about seven dollars and twenty cents for these um, LED uh, replacement uh, tubes. Uh, that's pretty damn cheap. <laughs> so, well, have a good day. That was a bigger mess than I'd expected. Bye.